Hey guys, we're going to take a look at Milwaukee's new one key tick Bluetooth tracker. Uh, so I'm going to talk about how this thing works uh, and lay out some of the details for you. Um, and then I'm going to talk about hardware and software aspects of it because both of those work together uh, to make sure this thing works for you. Alright, so hardware first. Here's the close up on the tick. It's approximately uh, two inches by two inches by a half inch deep. Uh, it's got um, a UV resistant plastic shell here and then on either side you've got holes for mounting it with rivets, screws, zip ties, or you can just epoxy this whole back portion onto whatever you want to track. Uh, to open it up you just grab the front and twist and pull it open and you can see that the replaceable battery is right here. Um, that's a big deal because a lot of these tracking devices, the little Bluetooth ones, don't have user replaceable batteries and you've got to pay at least half the cost of the original one um, to get a replacement every year. So this one, the battery is supposed to last about a year long um, and these things are only one to two dollars uh, depending on whether you buy them in bulk or not. Um, so it's super cheap for maintenance wise. Plus the app tells you what the battery percentage is so you don't have to replace a battery just preemptively if you don't know it's charged and you think, well, I, I put it on there about a year ago, maybe I should replace it. You'll, you'll know when it's about to go out. Um, other things here, uh, this little foam piece compresses the battery onto the little circuit board you saw under there. And then around this outside, you've got a rubber gasket uh, that, that seals with the inside of this. So whenever you put this on here, it's IP67 rated. So it's waterproof, it is dustproof, it is shockproof, it is vibration proof. Um, and it's UV resistant. So pretty much any environment you put it in, uh, this thing's going to be able to take it uh, and continue operating. So that's pretty much it for the hardware side of things. Uh, as far as design goes for this, I think it's a really great design. The only thing it's really missing is a, a buzzer. Um, because a lot of these little Bluetooth trackers have a, you know, on the app or whatever, you can press a button and it will cause the, the tracker or whatever to beep. Um, and this one doesn't have that, and I think part of the reason is it's IP67 rated, uh, so they don't have room to cut speaker slots. Um, but, you know, newer phones do have speaker slots, and they are at least, you know, IP54, um, you know, water resistant. Uh, so I don't know if it would have been possible with this, but I think that's why, probably to keep the cost down, uh, as well as, you know, just design easiness, ease of use, this doesn't have a beeper. Uh, that's the only thing that I think this, this could be improved upon is having a, you know, find my tool button uh, with an audible beep uh, from wherever that tool is. Alright, so that's probably enough about the hardware. Let's take a look at the software next. Alright, so here's the one key app opened up to the inventory tab. Uh, that's what you're going to use to manage the, the tick. And right here we've got, um, I made a toolbox. And so what you do is you, you make a tool that doesn't have one key and then you assign the tick to it. So then it just treats it as this one toolbox. Um, so, or whatever, ladder, truck, miter saw, whatever you have that you want to put this on that's high dollar of value enough to warrant a $30 tracker. Uh, so you, you can see I've got one entry here for it and it's got a flag that says it's missing. I set that, uh, testing out the location notifications for this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open that up. See here, um, we've got the, you can report it found, the status is missing, I've got it set like that. Uh, you've got the location it was last seen, um, and I'm covering up my address, but it's got a little Google Maps uh, preview there, and you can click on that and see a little bit zoomed in Maps view. The one complaint I have about this section is that it won't actually open up the map app uh, for Google Maps. Uh, you can see where it's located and you can see the street and everything, um, but you, you can't actually open it in Maps, which is really counterintuitive. They need to add that in the software, completely a software fix. Uh, you've got your tick coin cell level, um, and you can see it's, it's accurate to the 1%. Um, I've been using this thing for probably close to two months now, right around there. Um, so it's 25% in two months. Um, and I've been messing around with it a lot. It hasn't just been leaving it and forgetting it, so it's probably part of the reason why it's a little bit lower in battery. It's actually the first time I've seen it that low. It normally says around 90% when I open it. Uh, you've got the tick serial number, so you can actually open up the tick and look at the serial number and verify you have it on the right tool. 
Um, and then you've got a location that you're going to assign it to, or a person, and then like a job site for the location. Um, you can also report it found. So that's pretty much all of that information you're going to see there. Um, and then you can go back and I'll say, you know, we'll go to the add something. So we'll do plus. And right here you've got Milwaukee tick. So you can say add a tick. And it walks you through adding this thing. And I, this one's already added, so I can't actually do it again. Um, but you open it up and pop the battery out. And you go to the next step, and you keep the battery out. So this is like, it's resetting it when you've got the battery out. I don't know if they have a little capacitor in there or something that you need to wait. Um, but you wait for 10 seconds, put the battery back in, and then it sits here and picks it up. And so why it has you pull the battery out is because uh, the, the Milwaukee developers actually explained to me it goes into burst mode uh, for broadcasting its location um, whenever you take the battery out and put it back in. So normally it's like 10 to 15 minutes, every, every 10 to 15 minutes the tick sends out a hey, here I am Bluetooth signal um, and that wakes up any phone apps nearby that, that have a one key uh, app installed and says, all right, we found this tick, here's the location, and they beam it to Milwaukee um, to their, their servers and database and whatnot. Uh, so when you're registering it, they want it to happen immediately. They don't have to want you to wait 10 to 15 minutes. So that just burst mode broadcasts a whole bunch every time you pull that battery out and put it back in. Uh, and then it'll find your tick and then you go through the rest of the setup, which is really straightforward. Um, so one of the other things, uh, if you want to know, when you go to nearby tools, you see it's picking up my drill, um, but it's not picking up the tick. And I don't think there's actually a way to locate a tick and see it in the app. I think it's completely from, only from Milwaukee's side that you're going to see it. And if it's your tick registered to your account, you'll get notifications on the location. But you're not going to see it in nearby tools. You have to go to inventory and then look at the location of whatever tool you're trying to find. And I think that's a security thing because, you know, a one key tool, you can hide these. I'm pretty sure they're just setting ticks to default hidden all the time because it's probably going to be a high dollar value item uh, and you don't want people being able to find it if you forgot to set it as hidden. All right, we've gone over the hardware features and the software features. Now let's talk a little bit more about how this works and pros and cons to that. All right, so with a Bluetooth device like this uh, and like the other Bluetooth trackers out there like Tile, uh, Tracker, and Chipolo, um, all of these use an app connected to it, on a, installed on a phone, that has Bluetooth and the phone has GPS. So what it does is, this finds a phone with that app installed and broadcasts a signal. The app says, hey, I found this device, broadcast the location from the phone and the serial number of whatever device it was to the server of the company that's running it, in this case Milwaukee, and then that pings the user that's associated with that device of the location of where the device was last seen. So it doesn't have to be just your phone, it's anyone's phone with a Milwaukee One Key app installed on it that has a GPS signal and it has Bluetooth enabled. So that, that's way better than a 100 foot radius, uh, which I think might be a misconception with some people. You don't have to be within 100 feet of your, your tool that has this on it. Someone with a One Key app has to be within 100 feet of your phone. Now, the benefits of that is this has a really low power uh, Bluetooth signal um, as far as using up battery life, so the battery lasts about a year. That's in contrast to a GPS device, which the battery is only going to last, you know, like a week maybe, or maybe two weeks if it's a really efficient design. Um, because that's having to broadcast cell phone signals of where it's at, and it's having to pick up GPS signals. Uh, so it uses a lot more power. Plus, with this, you don't have to pay for a service plan with it. You buy it once, you pay a dollar or two per battery per year, and that's all the maintenance you have. So a dollar or maybe a dollar fifty a year to operate this, uh, to replace the batteries. Um, or if you're looking at a GPS signal, you could be looking at the cost of this, which is 30 bucks a month, just to keep up with your tool because it has to have a cell phone plan. So the way this gets around that is it uses an existing person's cell phone plan to broadcast 
the GPS information from that cell phone. Uh, so that's the way the crowdsourcing aspect of this works, is you're using people's already existing cell phone plans to broadcast the data instead of buying an individual cell phone plan for the tracking device. So if you're looking at a GPS device, you've got the cost of the GPS, which is probably going to be at least $50 to $100, plus the cost of this $30, and you know, maybe, maybe if you buy with $10 a month if it's a really cheap one, that's still $120 a year just for operating a GPS device. So with a buy it once and forget it, this is great for lower dollar value items, um, like, you know, like a $500 miter saw, a... Uh, you know, something, uh, something that's high enough dollar that it sucks if you lose it, um, but not high enough dollar value, it, it merits buying a whole new GPS tracking device and paying a monthly service fee to find it. Um, those might be, be more suited for a work truck uh, or a trailer full of tools or a work van or something like that, or a big t job site toolbox. Um, that would be something you might consider a GPS device for, um, but if you're a smaller contractor uh, or if you know, you've got a lot of lower dollar value items uh, that are popular for walking off. You can hide this somewhere on them and you don't have to pay a service fee. You just pay once uh, for the individual tick. I think this is a great deal for, you know, people that just don't have a big amount of overhead to pay for tool tracking with GPS. All right, so you've seen how the software is supposed to operate. And I'm going to relay my experience with you. This is with software version 3.1.2. And if they rev it after this, this next section is completely unapplicable. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a you know, one of two, or this is an old video in the title, um, if I have an update. Uh, so the issues I've had with this right now, I get occasional location updates, but it might be once every 10 days or once every three days. It's not something usable. So it's definitely pinging my phone, and then my phone is pinging the Milwaukee database uh, and giving the location information of where my phone was when it, when it connected with the tick. However, it's not doing that a ton. And I got in contact with the Milwaukee development team to try to troubleshoot some of these issues. Um, and they've been really helpful getting back to me and trying to work through some of it. Um, and they're promising an app update coming up soon. So I'm hoping that's going to fix these issues of very intermittent tool updates. Uh, like I said, that's in the span of like three to 10 days, I'm having gaps where it's just not updating. And I know I'm within range of the phone uh, with the tick, and I'm restarting the app, I've restarted the phone, I've restarted the tick. Nothing really seems to reset it with a consistent basis. Um, so the reason I know it's a software issue and not a hardware issue is Milwaukee, the, the development team has told me they're seeing up to 220, I think, location updates, sometimes 300 a week. Um, that's 300 a week, so that's, if you do the math, and it varies depending on, uh, you know, how often I was in contact and how often I was close to this, that's around once every 30 minutes. That it's getting updates from the tick, but it's sending corrupted, null location data from my phone. So the tick did its part, it said, hey, here I am, the phone says, there you are, I'm going to tell Milwaukee's servers that I found you here. But the part where it says I found you here, it's sending 0, 0 for latitude and longitude instead of the actual latitude and longitude. So it seems to me that should completely be a software issue. And this is all with version 3.1.2 of the Milwaukee Tick uh, one key software. And I've tried this with multiple phones. I've tried it with my wife's GS7. I've tried it with my old, old GS4. And I've tried it with an HTC Desire 526. Um, the GS4 won't even connect to this. And I don't know if it's the phone or if it's something weird about the older antenna design with the Bluetooth. Um, because that, that phone connects to my car stereo. It connects to Bluetooth speakers. Um, I haven't had a a problem with it connecting to anything Bluetooth except for the tick. Uh, but I also can't see my one key drill uh, in the inventory with the one key app on the GS4 either. So I've written that one off as not working with this for some reason. I don't know if it's the phone. I don't know if it's an incompatibility with the, the tick Bluetooth and my GS4 Bluetooth or not. I don't think it should be um, because I've, I've used 
I've used a GS4, not the same one, and used to be able to connect to this. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but the HTC Desire 526 um, and the Galaxy S7 both connect, uh, and I can. that's what I've been getting my updates off of. Also, I have only had, to my knowledge, updates off of my own cell phones. I turned my phones off for a week, deleted the one key app off of them, and walked around the, the city, um, went, went to, well, in the, the, the Metroplex area. Um, I went to Home Depot, where you'd think there might be someone with a one key app. Um, I get stuck in traffic where, you know, tons of people are, are waiting um, to go through a security checkpoint every morning. Um, so I'm, I'm near lots of other people from day to day. I work in a five-story office building. Um, but I haven't gotten any location updates from anyone else. And it might be I'm not, you know, in a construction trade uh, as far as demographics go, so you'd expect to see some better results there. And the metro population where I live is like 440,000. Um, so if you live in a big city, you're probably going to get more hits off of other people's one key enabled uh, cell phones with, with an app on them. Um, so I've seen very sparse updates from this so far. That can change with a broader user base and an up key update to the software. Um, so as far as user bases go, other crowdsourcing Bluetooth tracking uh, uh, competitors out there, you've got Tile. They have anywhere from 500,000 to a million users. Um, for Milwaukee's One Key app, if you look it up on the Google Play Store, uh, it's got 50,000 to 100,000. So that's a tenth of the users that Tile, which I think is the most successful Bluetooth tracking crowdsource device out there, uh, that they have. So Milwaukee's got a ways to go to build their user base. Um, and one thing they could do is they could add either tick, free tick giveaways for people that download and use the One Key app and have it active, or they could even give away like cheaper M12 tool sets uh, for people that regularly have the, the One Key app open and, and broadcasting. So they have a path forward for getting a much broader user base, even than someone that actually wants to use a tracker device, uh, you know, they, they have more incentive to get more people involved with that, uh, with tool giveaways or whatever incentives they have than someone who just wants to track something. Uh, and the other thing is they've got a path forward with software. I think this is a, a very good hardware design, just right now it's not supported well with the software. If they can fix that, I think this is a winner. But until then, I really can't recommend this because you're only getting one update maybe every three to, to 10 days. And when you, if you have something stolen and you want to be able to find it, uh, you've got a limited amount of time until whoever stole it might find this somewhere on there and pull the battery out of it. And once they pull the battery out of it or smash it, it's all over, you're never going to find it. Um, so, you know, those first, first day that whatever you have walked off the job site and you can't find it, um, that's a critical time for you to be able to see where it's located. Uh, so if you only get updates every 10 days, it's almost useless. All right, so wrapping up, I think this is a great idea. It offers a very, very low cost solution over a GPS tracking solution. Um, it's just Milwaukee needs to fix the software on this before I can recommend it. Right now, I'm saying this is a don't buy, uh, just based on the infrequency of updates I get from the location. Uh, in the future, when there are more users and the software has been updated, um, I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, but until then, unless you see this as a video as a one of two or an old version, um, and if you look on the, the App Store right now, and I haven't tried, I haven't tried iPhone, so I don't know if iPhone works better, but for Android, 3.1.2 is the version I'm using right now and basing this review on. It is not working well enough for me to, to recommend this. Alright, so hopefully this review is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.